You've arrived. You're in the right place. 8.30 Eastern Time, Wednesday night here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, our special Miami edition each and every Wednesday with Cam Underwood from State of the U. So lock it in for the next uh, 60 minutes or so. We'll see how it goes. If you've got plenty of good questions and comments, leave them in the live chat. Of course, I'll be scanning what you have to say and delivering my own questions and comments to uh, Cam Underwood. Uh, uh, please check out the previous videos because Cam's been on just about every Wednesday for several months, breaking down Miami football for us each and every week. Cam, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Uh, you know, I feel, feel good, feel strong. Uh, hanging out in my freshly, newly air-conditioned home because my air conditioning broke earlier, so I had to have that serviced. But whatever. So uh, it's nice and comfortable now, so I'm uh, good and comfortable to uh, talk some Miami football. So let's have some fun. Lock it in here to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So you can also help build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link that you find in the description section of this video or any video. Just do your regular Amazon shopping. Do exactly what you would do otherwise. And a small little portion of that comes to build the channel. Also, we've got the super chat on. So if you appreciate uh, what we do here at uh, my channel, but in addition to that, more so what Cam brings every Wednesday night for us, please uh, leave something there in the super chat. And I'll be reminding you that from time to time there in the live chat as well. So Cam, uh, as you mentioned to me before we started to record, uh, some recruiting news is uh, out there. So I'll let you uh, take it away from there. Yeah, and the, actually, like I kind of buried the lead uh, thinking about it. So there, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Number one, he has a quarterback for the 2020 recruiting class. His name is Tyler Van Dyke. He's from your neck of the woods up in Connecticut. Um, goes to Suffield Academy, and I forget the town. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, 6'4", 216, um, a rocket arm. Uh, and guy can move a little bit. He's not a Tate Martell kind of Johnny Manziel uh, scrambler, but he is athletic for his size. You see him running around, um, you know, making guys miss, extending plays, rolling out uh, on his uh, highlight film. And his highlight film is it's pretty good. Uh, you know, he threw for a little under 1,900 or 2,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, five interceptions as a junior. So, you know, you hope that those numbers are going to go up with a 57% completion percentage. So, you know, solid. Not like, you know, Trevor Lawrence numbers or anything where he was throwing for 4,000 yards a year in high school. Um, but he has some tools. So, obviously, he's well built for the position at 6'4", almost 215. He should easily be 230 you know, 235 in college once he gets to like a weight program uh, and just kind of developing, you know. Um, so he, he should be able to, to grow into his body. Uh, the kid has a cannon for an arm. And, you know, like I've been on record here saying that Nikosi Perry has the strongest arm in the quarterback room. That's going to change when Tyler Van Dyke gets to campus. That's the kind of arm this kid has. The first video or the first play on his highlight film, the kid flicks the ball pretty much almost flat-footed with very little like stride weight transfer and throws the ball 63 yards on a dime. Like, it is, I mean, or it was, it was like 58 or 63, one of the two, it was something like that. But that's the first, first play of his highlight film. I mean, this kid has a cannon. He plays baseball also. He's been clocked into the mid-low 90s, uh, you know, on the hill or from the uh, infield throws and things like that. I mean, but he has an absolute cannon for an arm. Uh, he works under center. Um and in the shotgun, but he has experience under center, taking snaps, taking drops, running play action. And that's a big positive for him because he won't have to learn how to do that at the college level. Like, you know, basically all three of these quarterbacks uh, and Peyton Matoka, when he comes in, all the quarterbacks for this year really having their first experiences under center. That's not the case for Tyler Van Dyke. So, uh, you know, he's uh, he, he's the guy that Danny knows wanted. Uh, picked Miami over Syracuse was another team. Dino Babers wanted him to be uh, their quarterback of the future. And if Dino Babers wants a quarterback, that's a quarterback that you want, period. Like, just full stop. So if he – yeah, Dino Babers wanted Tyler Van Dyke, sign me up. Um, but I also have eyes in my head and a brain that works. So, yeah, um, you know, he had many other offers around also. I think Michigan, North Carolina, um, and Boston College, some other teams, you know, in the locally and regionally um, had offered him as well. So I think he had like 16 or 17 offers Tyler Van Dyke did uh, before he committed to Miami. And he took a secret visit last weekend uh, because, you know, you can take unofficial visits. You can go to campuses and things like that right now because it's the contact and evaluation period. So, you know, ahead of 
that everybody, even like last week, I think I was asked about it. I said, eh, I'm not really sure, blah, blah, blah. Uh, because, yeah, like that's what it looked like. He was going to go to Syracuse, Tyler Van Dyke, that is, uh, like with his commitment. And then last weekend, he quietly flew down, had a nice couple days here in South Florida, met with the coaches, talked to, the, you know, a couple of the players, yada, 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 goes back home. And he's like, yep, that's my spot. And he committed. Um, so that, you know, draw is another player on offense that Miami has in this class and the offensive recruiting is going better right now than the defensive recruiting um, just by the talent that's already committed. Uh, if you look at quarterback, you got Tyler Van Dyke, who's a four star. He's the highest rated recruit at the quarterback position of the big three in Florida. That's Miami, Florida and Florida State. That's just a that's a verifiable fact. So, you know, whatever people want to say, oh, like, you know, Florida fans. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if they play high school football in Connecticut. Your best tight end ever who wore number 81 hails from Connecticut. Like, don't come to me and talk about that when you have Tyson Fomanch who uh, committed to Clemson and both of those teams, well, Cl well, Florida in particular, because uh, they were the ones who were talking stuff, you had him on campus for two separate unofficial visits. Don't talk to me about that. You know what I mean? Um, but Tyler Van Dyke, number one. You got Don Chaney Jr. at running back, who's a top five running back in this class. The kid is an absolute athletic freak. You got Marcus Fleming, who can fly at right wide receiver. You got Brian Robinson, who's an all round beast at wide receiver. You got Dominic Mamorelli at tight end, who's 6'4, 235, plays in a wing T uh, program. So he's a good blocker and way more athletic than you would think because, you know, Naples High in Naples, Florida doesn't really run uh, that many pass plays for him, but he still makes plays. If you're looking at the skill positions on offense, dude, they're doing work. And it's a little counterintuitive because you would think, oh, Manny Diaz was the defensive coordinator. The defensive recruiting would be ahead of the offensive recruiting. But I think that he and everybody knows that the offensive recruiting needs to be to this standard, to this level, to really take this program forward. So that's going well. So, yeah, the latest commitment, Tyler Van Dyke. I put up a welcome to the U piece on State of the U. Boom, done. On the other side, however, Miami's missed on a couple linebackers this week that – uh, okay, well, the first one was five-star Antoine Sampa from Woodbridge, Virginia. And most everybody thought he was down to, like, Florida like Florida State or Miami, but leaning Miami, like probably going to go to Miami. Um, National writers wrote it. Mike Farrell from Rivals wrote it. You know, like even the guys on 247, other sites were like, okay, you know, we feel pretty confident about it, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm on Twitter, and I see Jimmy Detail uh, from – used to be from the – uh, New Orleans or whatever, the, the detailed newspaper down there. But now he runs uh, one of the, the rival site for LSU. And I just see tick. And that's his thing before a commitment. He's, you know, tick, tick, boom. So he just goes tick, dot, dot, dot. And we all knew what time uh, Swamp Sampa was going to commit. And I just said, oh, man. So, you know, let's go delete that draft of a welcome to the UP side of the editorial. So, yeah, he's a guy who all of a sudden went to LSU. And LSU is recruiting at a higher level than they pretty much ever have. Um you may make your own guesses and <laughs> about why, you know, but I mean, they got a five star uh, Raheem Jarrett, five star wide receiver from Washington, D.C. All of a sudden who like was not looking at LSU. Um, they get Antoine Sample, who wasn't looking at LSU. They get Jermaine Bruton, uh, Burton, Burton. Yeah, Burton, who used to go to IMG, but now is back home in Calabasas, California, who at one time was early committed to Miami. He's committed to LSU now. They're just they're pulling in these four and five stars out of nowhere all of a sudden. And when that kind of thing happens, you know, we probably have an idea why. But yeah, whatever. Point of fact, Miami or a lot of people thought that Sampa was going to come down here. Uh, that was not the case. Just today, uh, Jayon McCluster um, from Largo, Florida. Um, he was down to Auburn, Florida State and Miami, and he chose Florida State. But he was a Florida State lean uh, for a while. Both of those guys, Sampa and uh, McCluster, are linebackers. So that was you know Manny Diaz's coached position, uh, which is now being coached by uh, new defensive coordinator Blake Baker. Uh, but that's that's two whiffs at two talented guys. Uh, you know, within the span of like five days. Now. Jalen McCluster, he was saying that he might want to play in college with his friend, um, oh, my God, Alvin something. Uh, I can't remember his last name. Whatever. But he uh, he's Mathis. There it is. Excuse me. Alvin Mathis, uh, who's from the same town but goes to the other high school. And they were saying, oh, we're going to be a package deal. We're going to be a package deal. Um, but then McCluster commits to Florida State, who is not anywhere on Mathis's radar. 
So, you know, sometimes it's the wonderful world of recruiting where 17 and 18 year old kids say things and then they do something opposite. Um, so uh, Alvin Mathis is, is somebody else who Miami is going to look at a linebacker. But yeah, you know, um, missing on guys is obviously not a thing that you want to have happen. But there are a lot of guys who are out there who are talented to to come to bring in, especially at, you know, a linebacker. And it, it double hurts on top of just missing on guys because we already know that the linebacker position needs to be an elitely recruited position this year because Miami is going to lose everybody. You know, like Sam Brooks, who knows what he's going to be like coming off of a knee injury. I mean, yeah, he played a little bit uh, last year for Miami Northwestern, but we're not really sure what he's going to be. Plus, in fact, he was an edge rusher more for Northwestern than like a stand-up linebacker. So making that transition is kind of nebulous in and of itself. Avery Huff, an uh, athletic freak, a really well-built guy, 6'4", 205, but he needs to put on weight. You know, he's a playmaker, and he probably is going to play this year, but we need other guys. So when you miss on a Sampa who you – you know, we're in on, he's what, 6'2", 230. You miss on um, McCluster, who's 6'1", 195. You know, all of a sudden now it's like, okay, cool. Now we really got to start hitting on some of these guys. That Alvin Mathis, that, you know, if you believe that there's a chance with Justin Flo, the number one linebacker in America. Oh, by the way, Justin Sampa, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Sampa was the number two linebacker in America. So, you know, he's up there with Justin Flo in terms of, you know, build and talent. Like, you know, maybe you pull a Savell Smalls from Washington, a five-star uh, linebacker. Maybe you pull a Justin Flo. But eventually, you're not not—you're going to need to pull these guys, especially at linebacker, where there is a dearth of talent, especially moving forward after this year. Because you're going to lose all four guys. That's Romeo Finley, Shaq Corderman, um, Zach McLeod, and Michael Pinckney. All four starters. And, yes, I count Romeo Finley as a starter because, yeah, whatever you rotate with. You know, if you're going to go uh, four two or four three at the you know bring in uh, that that striker position, but all four of your starters and linebacker are gone, so you got to bring in guys of this caliber to replace them because the other guys on this roster are not that talented. Plain and simple, Patrick Joyner might be a steal moving him actually back to stand up linebacker. Every Huff, yes, the rest of those guys, I'm not sure any of them can play major snaps. Who are not going to be a liability on defense? So you got to bring in guys. So missing on Sampa and missing on McCluster are not necessarily the news that Miami wanted, but there are other guys out there, and hopefully we can make moves so that we can have a celebration or a, I can have fun talking about it, like I did with Tyler Van Dyke, the new quarterback commit, uh, when we get some linebackers in this class.